Hello and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to achieve the RSA algorithm in Python. We're going to learn and understand the mathematical behind the RSA algorithm. I split this uh, chapter into five parts to simplify as much as I can uh, the mathematical methods we're going to use and to understand it and to, uh, to uh, make it uh, simple to understand. So, part number one would be to find the prime numbers, P and Q. Those numbers are very important because the RSA is lie on those two numbers. So, if those two numbers will be uh, uh, small numbers, it mo it will be uh, um, it will be easy to not easy, but it will be more easy to uh, to crack our. Uh, decryption keys, the secret key. Part number two will be to find the comprime numbers to phi. Part number three would be to find the encryption keys and its corresponding decryption keys. Part number four, encrypt and decrypt the messages through the encryption and decryption keys we found. Part number five, known issues and how we're going to prove our code result. So let's begin with part number one. Part number one, find prime numbers P and Q. Let's open a blank uh, Python and we're going to write our first um, methods um, which will uh, ensure that the user input will be eventually prime numbers. So what are the prime numbers? Prime numbers are numbers that's greater than one and can be divided evenly only by one and by themselves. So we have a condition that P and Q right, need to be greater than one Right? And let's describe the numbers between P and 1 to be X and the numbers between Q and 1 will be Y. So So we say that the prime numbers need to be greater than 1 and can be divided evenly only by 1 and only by themselves. So it means that P modulo X needs to be different from 0 and Q modulo Y needs to be different from zero when I say when I say zero I mean we will have a reminder when we'll do the model um, action so let's do the simple um, task first we will ask from the user to put a prime numbers okay P and Q so let's go and request an input Row input first time and second time. All right. What next? Now, um, we know another thing that P and Q, this is the first condition, need to be greater than one, right? And we wish not to get the uh, numbers that lower than one and equal to one, right? So how are we going to ensure it? Let's start with a while loop, which says that int P, the first prime number, 
if it will be smaller than one or int p will be equal to zero, uh, sorry, to one, then we going to ask again from the user a row input. This is the first condition for the prime number. What's next? Next, we, how are we gonna know um, if that number uh, is eventually will be a prime number if he, if the number we got from the we got from the user is uh, greater than one and is uh, smaller than p? Okay, so we need to iterate all the range between one greater than one, the numbers greater than, than one, and the numbers are that smaller than p, and to check for each number if p module in our case it x which it represent the range number between p and 1 if the module between them will be different from 0 if so and he guarantee both conditions we can say that it is a prime number if we will have one number between this range that is evenly divide with our prime number so with the supposed prime number so we cannot say uh, that it will be a prime number so we, we will need to request from the user again to put a prime number so we say first we need to iterate all the range between Two and right, we start above one and p. Next, we are going to ask if our prime number, which we think it's a prime number, if it will divide it evenly by the range of numbers and it will be equal to zero, right? So it means it will be divided evenly. So that's when even one of the number, not just a couple of the numbers, even one of the number from the range will be will cause to our uh, supposed prime number to be evenly divided. So we will request again from the user to put prime number. And again, we will need to check it. So, how are we going to make it again? How are we going to make it after we ask on the user uh, to put a new prime number? How, how are we going to check it again without make our code long and hard to understand? So, we will put a while loop before the for loop, okay, above it and says while u is equal to 1 and p is not equal to 2 because 2 is a prime number okay so we don't need to check it we can exclude it Now we will need to put a break in order to reset the for loop and start all over again. But if our prime num our uh, supposed prime number has no uh, divisor in the range that caused them to be divided uh, to divide uh, evenly, okay? So we can say that it is a real prime number. So first we will 
reset view. So the while loop will uh, break and we will exit from the endless loop. Let's do it as well for the queue, the second prime number. So, as well for Q, we are going to ask again, request a new final loop. And we will need to break it. Else, we can say it's a prime number. And let's print all prime numbers. We forgot to put an one in order to continue with the endless loop. Okay. So before we take the break, so let's test our prime number. And check our uh, our methods to to successfully uh, choose a really prime number. So let's begin with the number uh, four, eight, nine, 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 ten, eight, nine hundred, twenty-five, two. 24, 22, and 21. Okay, we you can see that it's working perfectly, and we don't have any issue. So. We're done with our first part. Uh, let's see it again. We first took uh, as from the user to put uh, numbers. We will need to ensure that it will be prime numbers by the condition. We will need to ensure which prime number says that those numbers are need to be greater than one, and they will divide evenly by one and by themselves so we managed to do it with the for and while loop so it basically says if the if there is not if we think it's a prime number we would need to check the range between one to <coughs> the chosen prime number and to check if we have any reminder with those uh, numbers with this range so if we will have one uh, number that in this range that will make 
our number to be divided evenly so it's not a prime number so we will break it and again insert into u the value 1 so it will <coughs> it will repeat it until we will get from the user a number that have no uh, divisor that can can cause it to, to be divided evenly except one and except himself so see you in the next part thank you very much part number two find the coprime numbers to phi n so after we got our p and q prime numbers and we verified that they are prime numbers we will need to find the encryption keys and its correspondence keys i prefer to store all of the encryption keys that i found in two-dimensional array so i have more possibility to get and strange and more powerful encryption uh, for our messages so you have a couple of possibility and not just one number so in order to find all the encryption keys and its decryption keys or the corresponding decryption keys first we will need to find the n the phi n and the conditions that we will need to consider that uh, first we will uh, find the E uh, the encryption keys so let's begin um, we know that N is gonna be the multiplier of P and Q okay before it let's ensure that P and Q will be an integer okay <coughs> then let's calculate N Okay, and then let's calculate phi n, which is going to be p minus 1, so for that, multiplied q minus 1. Okay, we have phi, we have, uh, sorry, we have n and phi n, and now we will need to find e. So, what are the conditions for e? Is that e not to be greater than one okay because we can take one but it will not have any uh, any uh, benefits for our encryption okay or for the the modules we will work and uh, and for all the programs it's not uh, there is no benefit to take the the one okay so it the range of e is between one to phi n okay and e need to be all the e numbers we will find coprime okay to phi n what are coprime numbers coprime numbers are two integers which does not have a common divisor except the integer one so it's definitely will decrease our range of numbers but we will need to find a way that will be efficient to store and save all of our all of our encryption keys after we will um, we will find the comp uh, the compound numbers and and the after we will find the compound numbers when when we will do it so how are we gonna find uh, the corporate numbers first let me give you an example how we can understand what how we can find two core prime numbers okay let's take the, for example that p will be um three and q will be seven okay we know that n will be 21 we know that phi n which is a p p minus one multiplied q minus one it will be 12 right so we need to find number which is between 1 to 12 and it will be co prime with fin so 
let's see how the number 12 is how many um, um, what are the numbers inside the range of 1 to 12 it can be uh, divided evenly okay so what are the numbers that will divide this number evenly it will be 1 right it will be 2 it will be 6 it will be 3 it will be 4 and the number 12 Now, let's take all the numbers between 1 to 12, okay, which is bigger than 1 and uh, is small for, uh, to 12, so 2, okay, have just the number 2, 3, only 3 will divide it evenly, okay, the same number, 4, have 2 and 4, right, 5, have just the number five six have two and three and six seven just seven eight two and four and eight nine will be three and nine ten two five ten eleven just eleven and that's it because we, it will need to be the e Okay, need to be below below 12 so now we need to ensure that of course each one of the e have also the one number so we know it so we don't need to have it here because it will be uh, it's obviously so now 2 and 12 have a common uh, divisor which is 2 so it cannot be co-prime right 3 and 12 have the same common divisor so it's not co-prime right except one of course 4 have 2 and 4 okay 2 and 4 so it's not a co-prime numbers, okay? Five have no common divisor with twelve, so it's a co-prime. So let's put it over here. Five e. The first we find was five. Six have all the numbers inside him which is core prime with 12 so it's not core prime 7 have nothing with 12 so is also core prime 8 have two numbers which are common with 12 so it's not a core prime 9 f1 a number which is free which is common with 12 so it's not a core prime 10 have two uh, sorry have just one um, number which is two which is common with 12 so it's not a core prime and 11 have nothing common with 12 so it's a core prime so we have got we have got three numbers which we found which is co prime with 12 and it's in the range between 1 and 12 so in order to make it efficient in our code and how we're gonna use the numbers we found how we're gonna store it so I prefer first to define a two-dimensional array which we will put inside him all all the numbers we found and then we will um, we will uh, point and compare which are the co-prime numbers and then we will delete the non-co-prime co -prime numbers from the two-dimensional array so we'll just have uh, e like that okay 
we will have five if, if we took the prime numbers p and q of three and four seven seven and eleven so that's that's how it's gonna be look after we will uh, finish to compare and to point which are which the numbers are core prime with uh, phi n so let's begin and see how we can achieve it efficiently so let's start and create a two-dimensional array okay there is a couple of possibility to do it uh, in my previous videos i have different ways to achieve it but you need to be careful and not get a multiple uh, um, elements inside your array so So, why I, we know that uh, in, we took the range between, uh, we have all the numbers between uh, bigger than 1 and uh, lower than 12. So, I decrease the two numbers, the 1 and 12, from the range of my two-dimensional array, because I will not need any more uh, uh, integer to put inside. So. Let's start a for loop, right? So the for loop will be in the range between two, right? Because again, as you can see over here, we said we need the numbers that are greater than one and lower than 12. Two and en between them, right? And then let's start another loop. What I did with those two loops, as we know, as we did it manually, we took all the numbers between 2 and 12, right, and we asked ourselves in which numbers inside the range of the specific number we choose, which are the numbers which will make this number be divided evenly. So, with the two for loops what what we did is the same let's copy uh, okay let's write it right here again <clears throat> en is 12 right and for c in range So, what we did is the following. We took, in the first step of i, we took the number 2, right? And then, c will be equal to 3. So, we will get now, we will have now, all the numbers between 2 to 3, okay? So, and not include 3, so, it would be something like that, right? And then... It will take the number three, which i is the will be the next uh, uh, variable. In the next loop, it will be two to four. So not include four. So we will get we will have uh, the free integer, which can we we will ask him in how many uh, digits in how many uh, numbers from the range 2 to 3, include 3, okay, so it will be 2 to 4, in how many uh, numbers will divide it you evenly, we will need to do this math uh, after this uh, both loops, so this is, those two loops will, um, will help us to take the range of each number we choose uh, between 1 to en and then to ask and to find 
which numbers inside that specific number will give us uh, uh, this number will be divided evenly. So let's begin in um, simple math. So we will ask if i, which is the number we chose, module c, which is the, uh, the range of the specific number, if it will be equal to zero, which is mean it will be divided evenly. So we will insert inside our two-dimensional array and uh, first we will uh, reset it and then we will insert the number which will cause to this specific number to be divided evenly. So let's uh, take an integer, okay, just for our two-dimensional array. Let's say it will be zero, okay and another integer, which will be for the second uh, element. So we say that BBR append 8. Why 8? Because I wanted to see and check after we will finish with our two-dimensional array if we have some mistake. So I pointed it as 8, okay? So, and next, we will need to put at the first two-dimensional array element the, the number which goes to, to, to the, num the number from the range of the number we chose to, that goes to him to be uh, divided evenly. So let's insert it and we will now increase our two-dimensional array, the second element, with one. Because maybe we will have another uh, element, like four. If we took the number four, we can see that we have two numbers which can cause to the specific number to be um, divided evenly. So, now we will need to reset the uh, second element, okay? Because each time we will move in, the, in our two-dimensional array uh, at the first element, we will need to start from the beginning, from the first, with is second element from the start, from the beginning. And of course, that R will be R plus one. We will um, move on. Each time we are going to finish with this second for loop. <coughs> so let's see how it's look like and print BB. Okay. Let's take which number we took over here. It was three and seven. Okay, three and seven. Let's begin. Okay, I have some stack over here. Just a moment. Okay, three and seven. So we can see as we did over here, which are the same, um, the same way of to achieve it. Uh, but for Python, we got two-dimensional array which have inside him all the numbers and each number we chose from the range between 1 and 12, we will find which number inside him will cause to him to be divided evenly. So we can see that 11 have nothing, 10 have 2, 5 and 10, 3 and 9, 2, 4, 8 have 2, 4, the same, we have the same, we have an accurate uh, result. So let's move on to the next step. Now we will need, as we did over here, which is, was very simple, we compare with our eyes which numbers will be um, 
co-prime with 12, right? So let's compare this number, okay, the fee and all of its inside numbers which cause to him to be divided evenly with all the numbers we found between the range 1 to phi n. So let's begin. <coughs> so this is was co prime number and now we move on to uh, our compare compile numbers right but before let's let's extract from our phi n all the numbers which will cause to him to be divided evenly so we will put it inside a regular array so for i in range between again 2 to e n plus 1 which is our phi n if e n model i will be zero so we will reset it and we will add an uh, element and we will uh, overwrite it with the right element which is I, which goes to our phi n to be divided evenly. Let's zero the t number again from start and t let's print our phi n phi n uh, let's call it like that e and q and let's test it 3 and 7 so you can see like we did over here we got a great result now we will need to compare these numbers right with each element from our two-dimensional array and again the compound number says that two integer which does not have a common divisor except the integer one so we can see that 3 7 and 11 and 5 are will be our compound numbers so let's begin and compare our e and q to our two-dimensional array which is the bb we call it so let's again reset the t and the r okay and now let's compare and find core prime let's say it's compare okay find co prime numbers okay so <clears throat> now i think it will be more easily to take each and each number from our regular array okay and compare it with each of one of our two dimensional array elements right so if it will be two we need to compare two with two with three with two and four with five with two three and six and so on and so on so we'll start with the easiest for loop which is going to be the first one in range right of len of our e and q which are the regular array then another loop which says the len of bb of course of all of the elements of 
uh, we've got so far in the dimension array. And the third loop, which is going to be inside each and each element of our two dimensional array. So we will take. So now we can compare each number from our E and Q to each number inside our two-dimensional array, okay? And we will point each number which is not co-prime with a zero. So later we can remove those numbers from our two-dimensional array. So let's begin <coughs> and compare. If E and Q, right? which is the number two, the first of the first element of ENQ, if it's equal to, to the two-dimensional array elements, which is D, right? And Q. So it's not a coprime numbers, right? So what we're gonna do is says, let's print it first and check it if it's right. Because we, we need to test it and it's not enough just to test it with our code and we will point it the specific element with a zero okay so next we can remove it but before we remove it we'll know that we point it in zero and let's print bb each time we make it and that's it so this is very simple but efficient so let's taste it and see if we are correct okay we'll take three and seven so we can see that the two element which have the same element with our regular array, it's not a co-prime, so we point it with a zero, right? And then we know also that two, uh, sorry, uh, zero, right? Is also a zero, <laughs> two also in our two to four, right? Is also not a co-prime, so also four is not a co-prime because we got the four and uh, integer over here. Five have nothing common, right? Six have two, three, and six, all of those numbers. You can see it over here. Seven has nothing common. Eight have only two and four, so we cannot have it as a common, as a co-prime, sorry. Nine have the free co-prime with uh, f the free common with uh, the phi n which is also the free uh, integer so it's not a co-prime 10 f just the number 2 which is common with the regular array which is will, will not be a co-prime and 11 have nothing so we finish to point and compare all of our uh, numbers and we can point which numbers will not in the dimensional array the comp prime numbers so we have possibility that we have couple possibility to encryption keys which is going to be five seven and eleven so you will not throw all of them okay it's very important next let's represent and delete the numbers with zero and represent the leader numbers which is 3 7 11 and sometimes we will have uh, numbers which let's take a, a example uh, if 9 will was a co-prime with uh, this number 
we'll need to ensure after we split this number to represent the nine number and not three and nine okay because this is the number we will choose for the encryption keys so let's move on and delete all the numbers which we don't want to use which are the zero numbers so let's say index right will be an array regular array let's search each and each element in our uh, two-dimensional array <coughs> Now, if we have any element which have the num the uh, the number zero, okay, so we will remove it. But before we remove it, let's do it like that. Let's. Insert to our index element. Okay. Increase T with one. And break. So let's print index and see so we can see that our index says that the element 0 in our two-dimensional array, the element 1, the element 2, the element 4, the element 6, 7, and 8 are going to be need to delete, okay? So, I just do it with index again to ensure that I have no mistakes, okay? We can delete it without this index, but I wanted to be ensure again that which numbers are not uh, are not co-prime so let's delete it with our index so uh, let's begin to delete it with our index so <clears throat> let's start with the for loop right and we'll have the length of our index I just did it with a different way you can achieve it with your way how you're gonna you are going to uh, delete it uh, let's print our two-dimensional array with, with before the change before the deletion of the uh, of the elements with with we found that they are not co-prime with our uh, phi n, so for delete bb and let's delete bb pop so now after we delete with our index we will need to decrease our index number because we already delete uh, one element for two-dimensional array, so we need to be synchronized with it. So here we go. Index each and each element inside it would need to be minus one. Let's see our index after we did it. So um, okay, Z before change okay let's print after the addition ok 
okay. Now, else, okay. Just a moment. Else, we're gonna do the same thing. That's how we're gonna um, um, delete all our uh, zeros uh, element we already point. So let's do the same. Uh, print. Again, you can achieve it in your way. Uh, I think you you will have much better way from me just for make it uh, more simple. Okay, now we're going to pop a BB its element, and again we will decrease each and each. So it will be synchronized with our two-dimensional array. Um, okay. So um, let's print our index. So we decrease our uh, uh, index uh, um, values inside the array, and that's it. Let's see the final uh, two-dimensional array. With the core prime numbers. Okay, let's clear. <sighs> okay, let's run the program and again with the same numbers three and seven. And as we can see, the final result we got the values we wish to we know and we wish to be our encryption keys, which are gonna be on the conditions with core prime to fee in and between the range of numbers between phi n to 1 so here we go we can see all the uh, how uh, we actually delete uh, the elements from the two-dimensional array first as you remember we point with 0 1 all the elements which is not core prime with uh, our uh, phi n and then with index we are going to um, uh, um, delete each uh, one of them which has the zero uh, point so as we can see each time we are going into the for loop we are going to delete all the elements which are not co-prime with our fn so uh, let's move on to the before we are going to uh, extract from the encryption key the decryption keys we would need to do another thing okay we will need to um i will show you what i mean let's uh, choose another uh, prime numbers okay let's do let's take 11 and we'll take 19 okay so as you can see our final uh, two-dimensional array we can have some um, numbers without um, we can have exactly we will have the accurate result but we will have additional to the, the leader numbers which is uh, like 77 which is uh, divided um, 
evenly with 11 and 7, we will additional have those values. So in order to uh, get them out of the two-dimensional array, let's do uh, this thing, okay? Let's write it over here. Um, let's take a loop into our two-dimensional array, okay? And we're going to say like that. We're going to replace the values from uh, uh, the last value to the first value, okay? We're going to uh, move them and after it to delete the, um, the element we don't want to see. We're going to represent only the leader numbers. So um, let's start with while loop. That's it. Let's see how does it work. Okay, so and I will explain. Okay. So we took at the last time eleven right and 19 and as you can see before let's say the number 119 have evenly divided with those numbers so here we can see that we took just the leader number and we don't wish to use those numbers because they are not actually our encryption keys and as well as uh, as we saw before um, 77 okay and you can find uh, different numbers with the same result so what we did very simple we iterate through our two-dimensional array and we ask if our inside the two-dimensional array each and each element have more than one uh, number so we will replace replace the last value with the first value and then we will pop out the last value and so on and so on until we will get to the first value so that's how we are going to delete all the values except the leader's values so we finish with the part number two and at the next part we are going to find the decryption keys which are corresponding to our, to our encryption keys. And please see the next video. Thank you. Part number three, find the encryption keys and its corresponding decryption keys. We already find, found our encryption keys and we store them into our two-dimensional array. We, are, we have a couple of uh, possibilities. If we will have any issue with the chosen uh, of the encryption keys of the specific encryption keys so how are we going to find the decryption keys from the encryption keys so it's very simple let's see that example okay so we uh, let's say that we will choose uh, the five uh, for encryption key as we know if we have three and seven is prime uh, numbers those numbers will be our encryption keys for use so let's choose the five okay and put it over here 
So decryption, we have the formula to <coughs> calculate the decryption keys. So it's ED needs to equivalent to one mod phi n. So we need to multiply our E and to multiply our mod phi n so we will and we need to minus them after that okay it will be some the logical uh, uh, the logical of it is under which says ed minus mod phi n it's need to be multiplied something okay need to be equal to one so in our case e is a is five multiply d minus mod phi n which is 12 right and multiply y need to be equal to one so we can <coughs> do it and calculate it and even write a formula to python according to that uh, um, example we have here but it's too complicated in order to uh, simplify it and our python uh, simplify it as logically and for our python uh, coding we will say the following d equal to 1 plus mode right 12 multiplied y and all of it need to be divided by 5 so we need to be careful okay the result must be okay an integer okay so we will need to accept any uh, any result but without it will need to be an integer without without any reminder after we we're gonna divide this number okay the mode uh, multiple y plus one divide five we must not have any reminder after that after that following action so the result must be an integer so in our case let's see how we can make it we will need to multiply <coughs> 12 let's see by 2 plus 1 divide 5 we will have a result but i don't recommend it okay to use if we get the same result for the decryption keys as the encryption keys not recommended okay because um it will be more uh, easy to attack us and it uh, is it's very big uh, disadvantage so we will tell to our code additional to to that major uh, condition that the result must be an integer uh, tick keys must be different from ink keys okay so let's continue and find another one so we stop with with two so let's multiply it by three plus one you can see it's not an integer also over here Over here, also here, and we got our next decryption case, which will be 17. We got an integer value, right? So let's do it again 12. Right, multiply it. It was uh, seven, I think. Yes, seven 
plus 1 divided by 5, we will get 17. So our decryption key is 17 after we, <coughs> we, co uh, we consider the following conditions. The result must be an integer and the result, the decryption keys, will not be uh, the same as the encryption keys, the same result, the same value. So that's how we're going to calculate our decryption keys from the encryption keys in simple way. So in Python, it's very easy to implement without get any issues or trouble. <coughs> so let's do it. So how we're going to write it in Python? It's very simple. We simplify the formula to the following formula, right? So we know that D will be equal to 1 plus mod 12 multiplied Y. And then the sum of both numbers divide by, by E, okay, will give us the result of D. So here we have it, okay, the following formula. And we should consider that the result must be an integer. We cannot accept something uh, different, some uh, value with reminder, okay? We cannot, um, we cannot uh, take it as a, as a result and you can test it. Uh, your, um, your encryption and decryption will be wrong. So you can try it. So how are we gonna make it possible in Python? Very simple. As we know, we have two dimensional array which have inside them, right? All the encryption keys we wish to work with, right? So what we need to do is to iterate each and each element at the two dimensional array, extract from it the values, and then to, um, to put them to visualize this formula uh, into Python and to put those values inside, of course, uh, mode uh, phi n is 12 in this case, right? So we need to find uh, d, so it be like that. <coughs> divided by 5, right? So, we need to find which is going to be mod 12. So, we need to find some number which will <coughs> which will guarantee to us that the divide uh, with this uh, sum of numbers by the e, which in our case is 5, would be the result of integer and now without any uh, reminder. So uh, we, it will divide evenly. So let's move to Python and write it down. So we so let's move to Python and write it and extract our encryption keys and decryption keys. So let's start. So, the first thing we need to do, right, is to iterate inside our two-dimensional array, okay, with two for loops, and to uh, to pick each and each element which are uh, which they uh, they are the encryption keys we're gonna use, and find its decryption keys for a random uh, for our, our for our in, uh, randomly encrypted key so first we need to iterate in our two dimensional array
So what those two for loops will do is to will give us the ability to pick the elements in our to-do natural array and test and find our decryption keys. So uh, what is the problem with those two for loops? The problem is that those two loops uh, will uh, exit, will finish their jobs when they will, they, uh, will finish to iterate all the elements we have in our to do natural array. So what is the problem here? The problem is that we're not always going to find our decryption keys uh, according to the number of iteration of those two for loops. I will give you an example. We know that our encryption key is five, right? Let's pick five, okay? And our uh, phi n is gonna be 12, right? So by the formula we need to use in order to find uh, d, so it will be 5d equal to one plus 12y, right? Divide by five, which is the encryption keys, okay? So, let's see what do we need to do in Python to make it possible. So, we, if we have two for loops, right? And it will iterate one time on each element. So we got five, uh, seven, and 11, right? So the first iteration is on the five element. So we're gonna find, let's say that y is equal to one, okay? And let's see, we can see that we will not get uh, uh, the, uh, the decryption key or the successful result we wish to because it will not divide uh, evenly uh, this number with our encryption key okay so we'll need to iterate again and again and again and we'll need to increase our y variable with one each time for each element okay so in order that we will do it until we will get result randomly we would need to put a while loop, okay? While, let's say is that i i not equal to one, okay? And we can say that i i is equal to zero, okay? So now, what will, uh, what will happen is that until we will not get any decryption key, this while loop is will iterate itself again and again and again until it will find randomly for uh, each of our encryption key its corresponding decryption key. Okay, so for five we will need to increase. Let's see, one plus one, so it's twice, um, twice for iteration, uh, double 12 plus one divided by five, we'll get the same uh, decryption keys as an encryption key and we said we don't wish to get it, so we need to iterate again. So one plus two multiply 12 plus one, it will not give us a good result. So four, multiply 12 plus 1, 5, multiply 12 plus 1, 6, multiply 12 plus 1, 7, multiply 12 plus 1. So we can see that when at the uh, 
At the seventh, uh, when we will go to uh, number of seven iteration, just then we will get a decryption key for the five encryption key. So that's why you're gonna need this while loop. Okay. So let's gonna let's continue. Now we need to implement the <coughs> the formula again d is equal to 1 plus a phi n okay multiply y divide by e must be an integer without any reminder so how we're gonna do it it's very simple as we saw uh, <coughs> at the previous videos. First, we need to say that, let's say that we will have another uh, another uh, variable value, which is gonna be i, 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 which is gonna represent our y variable, okay? So each time we're going to iterate, we're going to increase i, i, i by one, okay? So, each time we're gonna finish those two for loops, we're gonna increase it by one. So, let's say it's, it's zero, okay? So, now at the first it will be one and we can continue. So, we, f we, find, we found our y and how to calculate it. Now let's complete our uh, formula. Okay, so let's say is that QN okay is equal to EN multiplied I I I which is represent this uh, multiple variables e n multiple y okay and of course we need uh, to consider the one plus one right plus one so we will say that let's give another variable Q, Q, N is Q, N plus one. So we write down our formula. Now we will need to divide it. So let's see how we're gonna do it. Now for each encryption key we will find, we will do the following. If Q, Q, N, right? Which is it? this variable value q q n okay it's one plus plus uh, phi n double y so q q n model bb with the same encryption keys we find which is the first will be uh, the number five if we will give the prime numbers uh, three and seven if it's equal to zero we say that there is no reminder, right? And very important to that, QQN minus QN We can we can do it without it, okay? So let's say just that uh, our encryption keys has now the same value as its decryption key, okay? So QQN PB I D. So if it's right, what we're gonna do is that we're going to store 
our encryption keys and decryption keys inside the variables. So let's store them. Okay. So let's print something. Let's say we found something. <coughs> so let's store the encryption keys, which is going to be at our two dimensional array. And the decryption key is going to be the divide QQN, right? Divide by our encryption key. Now, let's print both of them. Ink and its deck keys, right? So it's going to be ink and deck. And finally, if we found it, we can say that um, We can say that iii double i is will be equal to one to stop the endless loop, right? And finally, that's it for now. So let's check our program. Let's run it. So let's give the prime numbers again, three and seven, right? And as we can see, that we found our encryption and its decryption keys. So we found that five is our encryption key and its decryption key is 17 when we calculate it by this formula. So Let's see if it's right. So let's put it again. 17 multiplied 12 plus 1 divided by 5. Uh, sorry. Um, sorry. 17 is 1 plus E. E and phi, uh, phi and it's uh, 12 divided by 5. So let's multiply 5 and it's going to be 85. And we're going to have 1. So minus 1, minus 1 and divide by 12 we're gonna get 7 y is gonna be 7 as we calculated before so we have uh, we have a mistake no uh, uh, not mistake sorry I didn't uh, we didn't uh, mention uh, which is uh, what is the number of the iteration? So let's see and print it again. Plus none of i to the iteration. So let's see it again. And seven. So we can see that this is the number. And let's check it again. 12 multiply
17. Sorry for that. 7. Multiply 12 plus 1. Divide by 5, it's 17. So, yes, our D will be 17 in our case. It's because we could take the 5, but we will not. Uh, we will not wish to get same uh, encryption key and decryption key must be different values okay not the same value so let's continue and now let's put our code into uh, into a function which will be more useful for us okay so let's define let's call it encryption decryption okay and we have and let's return the values okay return inc deck okay and I, I, I. So let's print. Let's do it. A, B, C. can see now we have a function which will do which will do it for us and will return our uh, ink and decryption keys so the next step we are going to encrypt and decrypt our message which is going to be the uh, much easiest uh, than the calculation we did with our formula so thank you for watching this video I hope that you will see the next video thank you Part number four, encrypt and decrypt messages. So we are almost in, a, in our final uh, stage. So how are we going to encrypt and decrypt messages? So it's going to be very easy. Let's uh, simplify the logical consumption of it. First, first let's see what we should uh, consider. So we got our encryption key, right? Which is 55 and it's corresponding decryption key which we found one of its decryption keys is 17 the prime numbers are 3 and 7 <coughs> the n 21 the n will be 12 so we need to take our messages which we will represent it by the letter m okay it's need to be smaller than n greater than zero if you would like then we need to take this message and power it by e okay power it by E and mode N how we going how we are going to make it efficient and of course to get an accurate result so we are going to do the follow first we will power M by E okay and then we will divide m power by e divide okay by n and we'll take the integer result without the remainder
so let's say that x is m power by e right divide to n the next step okay is to multiply x by n let's mark it as, as y okay and the final step is m power by e minus y will give us our encrypted text let's see an example so we know that let's say that our m after we um, agree or convert it into a number is 4 okay so 4 power 5 mod 21 so let's calculate first the 4 power by 5 will be 1024 mod 21 so x will be 1024 divide 21 and we will get Forty-eight, because we are taking just the integer number without the reminder. Okay, forty-eight. Then step number one, step number two, y will be forty-eight, right? Multiply by twenty-one, so we will get. One thousand and eight, and the last step is to minus m power e, which is one thousand twenty four, minus y, which is one thousand and eight, and we'll get our cipher text, the encryption text, the encrypted text. Sorry, so it will be sixteen after encryption. Okay. So, how we are going to write it in Python? Very simple. After we simplify the logical conception of it, okay, about by those steps, we can implement it without any problem. So, we start with for loop, and we will power our m by e. Then we will divide m power by e with n will take only the integer value without a reminder we will multiply then uh, the result x by n and the final step we will minus m power e by y and we will get our encryption encrypted text so let's do it At the last step, I forgot to mention something before we will continue. Uh, we, we return the triple i, but we need to return a different i, which will be the regular i, okay, which will tell us in which position we took our encrypted encryption key. As you remember, we had a uh, in our two-dimensional array, three possibility and I going to represent the place of the element we took it. It's very important to return it because if you will have no uh, accurate or good result with that specific encryption and, and its decryption key, we will move forward to other encryption and its corresponding decryption key. So let's return i 
instead triple i so <clears throat> let's define another function okay for encryption so we need to get we know n right and our text let's call it g1 okay the first step of course is to store the variable we got inside the local uh, variable of the function um, n will be um, let's say that n, n. okay now before we are going to start with the for loop let's ensure that and i will explain it at the last uh, part of our uh, section let's ensure that n is not uh, divided even evenly into g which is says with our text okay or g is not greater than n as we agree before that g which is which is our text need to be between zero greater than zero and smaller than n okay so we we'll just exit from our function so let's continue and start with our for loop which will take inside our encrypted uh, encryption key we are going to minus one because four loop started from zero and we wish to do the accurate power and if we will not decrease one we will have another uh, multiple action which is not needed and it will not represent the number of the power so let's say that Now we will need to multiply our text uh, e times. So here we go. Let's print it. Okay. Present our encrypted key, uh, encrypted text. Okay. Now, as you remember, we will need to divide the m power e, okay, by our n. So. while g minus greater than zero okay now we will multiply our result by our n this is stage number two we will multiply our m power by e divide n and after we will take the integer result we will multiply it by n okay so this is the same action so so 
let's ask if again g which is the text we powered with e minus the result we got after we multiply n by x is greater than zero so the x which is the encrypted x will be equal to g minus n and one We put here the n1 because we wish not to get an endless loop. Okay, we will break it while when we g will be greater uh, when the uh, when g minus n1 will need will be uh, uh, smaller than zero. Okay, so let's increase i by one. We do it in order to ensure that we have no we have no mistake by our calculation. So I prefer to check it again. <clears throat> okay, let's print our text. What? Let's return return uh, dex and let's call it to our function and so we will give n and let's say the four number okay so text after text and keep. okay so let's see it if you have mistake so as we can see we got we have the same result as before the encrypted text will be 17 after we will do the uh, mod procedure is the uh, RSA algorithm uh, request <coughs> so the next step is to decrypt and to see if our decryption uh, will return out our original text before the encryption. So, it's the same procedure like the encryption, but the big difference is that we are going to use different uh, power uh, variable, which is going to be the decryption key. So, let's call another function. Okay. or we can have it at the same function we have here and I prefer to do it in the same function so let's continue and say the following We'll use the same keys, uh, the same variable. So we store our uh, encrypted text into G and GQ. Okay. Next, let's say let's do the for loop in order to power the encrypted text by D. Okay, for I in range. Again. Uh, we will need to uh, ensure that 
we are going to um, minus one our uh, decryption key so deck minus one okay so the power will be accurate the power action and g will be equal to g multiplied g key let's see after power encrypted text after power and we store it, we store it into the into g variable so again i will be equal to g divide um, nn okay so the encrypted text we powered by d divide n which is 21 in our case okay then let's do the while again while g minus n and 2 is greater than 0 so n and 2 will be equal to n and 2 multiplied i now this is a uh, one step before we are going to uh, minus so uh, the minus action so as we can see this is step number two we're going to multiply again uh, x by n now let's open an if condition if g minus n n2 is greater than zero so let's store the original text which will be after the decryption it will be g minus nm2 now we will need to increase i by one in order to break the endless loop and to check again we will not have any mistake after we will uh, again check the, calcu the calculation by increase the i by one so let's say it's the before when we exit from it let's text after Decryption. Okay. That's two. And now we will turn dex and dex two. So let's check it. It's not uh, very efficient what I'm doing here, but it's just, it's just for example, encrypt a text and text after decryption. It's text. So let's check it. So let's see it. Let's run again the program as we put uh, the four number which represent our message so the first one will be three second seven as we can see 
um, after we encrypt the text it will be the text inclusion will be 16 and after we will decrypt it it will turn to its original uh, representation which, which will be 4 um, we can see over here all the procedure we took with all the steps to establish the RSA algorithm uh, first to find the core prime numbers and <clears throat> after after it to use one of its as our encryption key but it's not enough and that's why we store another encryption keys I will show you an example and we will talk about we'll talk about it at the next uh, part to the last part how we can avoid uh, some issues and problems when we um, when we play with small prime numbers so let's take the number 12 for example okay let's try to encrypt and decrypt it so 3 and 7 so as you can see okay let's take another another uh, let's take 8 so we can see that if we will take uh, the 8 number which represents our uh, text the encrypted text will be as the same uh, as the original text the same value 8 and we eventually we will not encrypt our text which is very uh, critical and very big issue and in order to avoid it we should use another um, additional um, <coughs> condition to check uh, part of that of that issue okay and to ensure that we are going to avoid it and we're going to use different keys okay and different different encryption keys and different decryption keys um, and then to check if we are okay or we have a problem with our prime numbers because when we use the small prime numbers we will have an issue as follows so before we uh, uh, before we uh, can say that our prime numbers have a problem we need for us to choose another encryption and decryption keys and to use all of the to use all of them and just then uh, we can say that we have a problem with our prime numbers so let's check it how we are going to ensure it we will have uh, if we will have problem as follow we will need to again to to choose different encryption key from we use till now and to find its decryption key so we need basically to iterate with those two um, functions okay we uh, we we use and configure so don't forget that at the first function we created we return our i number which is going to represent the current element uh, the current element uh, place which we took from our two-dimensional array which is represent our encryption key so we will need if we have problem like as we introduced with the 8 number we will need first to take the current encryption key to delete it from our two-dimensional array and to again iterate between those two uh, in our case between those two left encryption keys and choose one of them and again to try to encrypt and decrypt the text and again to check it to verify we have different encryption text from the original text and just then uh, we can ensure that everything is good if now again to iterate and to uh, find another encryption key and to forward with until we will have no 
encryption keys at our two-dimensional array and then we can say uh, that we have a problem with our prime numbers so let's <coughs> check our code again okay so we need to ensure that our encrypted text has a different value from our original text they will not have the same value additional we want uh, we won't need to see any zero values and again to check that our encryption key uh, sorry our encryption text and our decrypted text okay will not have the same value so let's start and um, and do uh, implement those conditions so let's start with while because we wish to iterate with all our encryption key if we will have one of these following condition so so if our decrypted text will be equal to zero or our encryption text encrypted text sorry will be equal to zero Okay, let's verify it again. Or, as we saw, our um, encrypted text is equal to our original text, which is the number. Eight we see here, so let's return a uh, G. Okay, let's return GQ. Okay, GQ. So GQ is our text, original text. Okay, value. So let's return it here. So it's not equal either to GQ. So if one of these, if one of these following it will eventually uh, take a place, so we will need to do as follow. Let's first see our two-dimensional array, which have inside him the encryption keys, and we use of course. Let's pop out the current encryption key we are using. Okay. Then we will need to again to uh, activate our uh, functions so let just ensure again okay Okay, so now we are going to reset our index, okay, and to ensure that we not, if we don't have any more elements, so we're going to quit the program. Ok, 
Okay. Else. We will need to again iterate to activate again our functions. Okay. with the same message uh, value. Okay, let's check it. So as we can see, we start with two prime numbers, three and seven. We found our Copal numbers, which will be our encryption keys into two dimensional array. We're gonna use each and each key if there is any use for it. If we will not have an accurate result with our encryption uh, text and or with the decryption of the text, so with the key 5 and its decryption key 17 and the index of the two-dimensional array is zero, okay, which we took our element. We got that our text after encryption is gonna be eight, and after decryption is gonna be eight again, and it's not good for us because uh, our uh, text didn't get any encryption at all. So, we're gonna pass and choose another encryption key. Again, first we're going to delete the current encryption key we used, and then we're going to forward with the next one. So with seven, we found the 19 decryption key. So again, we encrypt it again, and we got that, uh, as we can see, Moment. Let's do it again. Now we'll see where is the problem. So with the seven encryption key, okay, 
and its decryption key 19, we can see that again, our encrypted text after encryption action will be the same before the encryption action. So <coughs> this uh, action uh, is not good for us because we didn't do anything eventually. So we need to get forward with our next encryption key and we can see we will have the same result. So the major problem here after we verified it with all uh, our keys we try to encrypt with, with no success we can conclude that our problem is with our prime numbers. Let's choose much bigger prime numbers. Let's choose uh, 11 and 17. So we can see that with bigger prime numbers, we don't have problems. And of course, our text will be more complicated after the encryption to uh, uh, it will be more hard to uh, decrypt it without our decryption keys. So, thank you for watching this chapter and I'm looking forward to see you at the next last part. Part number five, known issues and approved code result. So, as we saw at the previous parts, we saw that if our decryption uh, encryption key uh, sorry if our encrypted text with its value will be equal to our original text before the encryption so we didn't do anything so we we even we can even the send our text uh, without any protection and it will be exposed and it will not uh, um, have any benefits. Uh, it's like we did uh, nothing and it's very dangerous. So we should put some uh, mechanism that can stop uh, the issues uh, behind our algorithm. So we already did it, right? And when we uh, when we uh, see that our encryption text and our text or our encryption key or our decryption key is equal to zero, we are going to delete the specific encryption key we use into our two-dimensional array. And again, we will try to encrypt and to decrypt our text until we, we will get an accurate and good result. If we will not get any good or an accurate result, we will not send and we will exit the program. Now, as we saw, if we are going to use a small prime number like 3 and 7, we can see that our encryption text will be the same as the original. So we should use higher prime numbers, okay? Second thing is, as we, as we uh, saw at the previous videos, we, when we extract the decryption key, okay, we verify that, let's gonna see just a moment, okay. We verify that our decryption key will not have the same value as our encryption key as we can see over here because if we, if it will if it will be possible the other side or the attacker can break uh, very fast uh, the code because the public key is exposed and you shouldn't uh, shouldn't want that your public key and your private key will be at the same value. So keep it in mind and you will need to uh, to add to your code as we uh, did at the last 
uh, part. Okay, another problem is when uh, we write our function, we didn't uh, explain it. If our n, okay, number, which is the multiple of the prime numbers, can be evenly divided by the text, we uh, we will not get an accurate result with the encryption and the decryption key. Let's see an example. And we already stopped it over here, okay, before we do all the calculation. So let's say that our, okay, our, uh, let's say that our uh, key will be 5 and 2, so it will be 10. Let's take um, 11 and 13, okay. Okay, so let's take 11 and 3. So you can see that we can see that our uh, just a moment. Let's put it over here, 11 and 11. We can see that we already uh, exit because let's disable it. Okay, you can see the condition over here, and what will happen is as follows. Let's take again the numbers, and as you can see text after encryption will be 11 okay it's the same original text and of course after decryption it will be the same value 11 so we should it will happen this case will happen if our um, n which is the multiple of the prime numbers will be can be <coughs> divide evenly our text okay value so we should use a mechanism or a condition which will stop it before we are going <coughs> to implement it and use it. So it's very important. So this is another point to remember. And let's see what was the problem with hey, we got an, <coughs> an error, strange error, statement. Okay. So thank you for watching this uh, chapter which discussed about um, how to implement the RSA algorithm in Python. Um, I hope you will remember all the issues we talked about in order that our encryption and our code will be more efficient and how we overcome part of the RSA algorithm uh, issues. So thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.